we go. Sorry about that. So I was uh, invited here for this because I've been dealing with uh, Philip Weicker from Weicker Ford for a long time, a good friend of mine. We buy all of our cars through him. And uh, he told me that this car or something special was coming down here to be delivered. And uh, glad to, uh, to be invited. Sorry about the camera, guys. My bad. What's up, guys? What's up, Josh? John, Mr. Bigfoot? John Bowen, what's up, guys? Yeah, we uh, we got a whole crew here. We got Will Rare Fab. Will, what's, what's up? up? Yo. What's up, guys? So, anyways, yeah, we got a lot full of uh, driveway full of awesome cars, some GT350s, Raptors, GTs, classic Mustangs, and everyone came here to uh, for the delivery of this car. So, anyways, I'm gonna shut up for a little bit. You guys get to watch. We've got actually a, a concierge from the uh, Ford GT uh, program here that uh, is going to explain to us some of the uh about the vehicle we're going to talk about the car and it's pretty neat because uh, they they send this guy out anytime there's a delivery of one of these cars they send this guy out or someone like him from the department to uh, talk about the vehicle and and hand it off to the new owner so what's up kenneth john what do we got here got a couple couple of Ford GTs rolling off the truck here. What's up, Nick? My man. This is so cool. So they scheduled this thing up at a specific time, and the driver shows up right on the dot. And the concierge is here to, uh, to unload it and go over everything. So, yeah, definitely. I'm going to put him on the spot, John, about John Cena. Thing is gorgeous. Like I said, I wasn't uh, missing up on an opportunity like this. I'm grateful to be here, grateful to know some uh, awesome people, as well as to be on the Ford side. So, not every day you get to see a brand new Ford GT delivered. No, Logan. The boat's later, buddy. We gotta call on the boat later. are going up for this one. We're actually not quite sure whose car this is, but I think it's the combined effort between all these people here 
We've been mining bitcoins, everyone. Everyone here has mined bitcoins together. Have we been mining? <laughs> this is how you pay for it with the bitcoins, guys. Matt, you got in too late. Christy, you made probably made a little money, but. Oh, definitely, Erica, you need this. Keep on mining, guys. Yeah, where's John Cena? What's up with him? I wonder if we'll get a comment out of uh, concierge about that. Probably not. This thing is sick, though. No, Brian, this is not mine. I wish it was, though. This thing is gorgeous. Oh, that is so dope. Ah. Wow. Like I said, not every day you get to see something like this. Pretty awesome. Look at the lines on this car. It's unbelievable. set of tires and you replace them like we did uh, with the RS? suspension feature I mean this thing just uh, looked like it uh, lowered by itself in different modes I don't even know that stuff it's crazy yeah exactly Skull yet. I think I got one in the car though. You gotta wear a hair hat when you get in that thing? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Just you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is great. So, yeah, here in, in just a moment, they're gonna. Uh, 
tell us about this car. The concierge from Ford is going to talk to us about this. For people who aren't familiar with the car, there's a lot of things that I don't know. And I'm sure uh, there's a lot of things that you guys would like to know. So, fill up. Definitely, anyone shopping for a, a Ford vehicle, gotta go and see my man Philip Weikert at Weikert Ford in Lake Wales. Great guy, great family to deal with, and uh, always takes great care of us here at Lethal Performance. And he delivers stuff like this. Total badass. The size of the brakes. hating on the EcoBoost for a while, saying that Ford uh, kind of chumped out not using a V8, but these EcoBoost engines have proven themselves, if you guys haven't seen, I mean a lot of the Ford F-150s with the EcoBoost, the 2.7, the 3.5 the liter, they're fast as can be, those are great trucks and it's a great motor, the Raptor, the new Raptor uses the 3.5 liter twin turbo setup. That's a sick truck, and uh, hopefully we, we have some uh, other new vehicles coming out shortly from Ford. it belong to? That's the question no one knows here. Who does it belong to? Whose car is this? Mine. Who's? Mine. Uh, there's a lot of people here they say it's their car. And if Facebook says it's mine, it's, you know it's true. Chad is a proud owner. Congratulations. Thank Chad. you. Thank you. <laughs> Came with the hairnet and all for yes, you? Yes, I got the hairnet. <laughs> yeah. They said I had to shave to get in it, so I did it. Glenn, my man. Yeah, so anyways, it's just going to be another moment, and the uh, concierge is going to go over the, the vehicle. I think it's pretty cool that we're going to get to see and hear about the, the car. Again, a lot of features that I'm not familiar with, probably most of the people here aren't familiar with. There's probably two very experienced people here with this vehicle. One guy who can drive the shit out of them. But... He's incognito. I might pan over there. Quick pan? I don't know. <laughs> What's happening? So, alright. Get back this sucker in.
<laughs> yeah. Bacon plate, dude. Who likes bacon? Everybody loves bacon. Again, guys, this is what mining for coins gets you. This guy's been working hard at it for a long time now. Now it's the craze, and this is it. This is what happens with the coins. This is, oh my god. You guys are so funny. Did they use the Goodyear F1s? These are uh, Michelin's uh, Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s. Up front and in the rear. So sick. Got the corn can up here. Dash carbon fiber everywhere. <laughs> How wide are the rear? Logan wants to know how wide the rears are. They are. Uh, I put a car seat back there, so it looks out of gas. 325, 30, 20 is in the rear. Sorry, sir, we only came with one seat. I just took the other seat out yeah. and put it away. Where'd the other car go? Where'd the, where'd the matching number two go? Yeah, right? And up front, we got. Two forty-five, thirty-five, 20s up front. New shop vehicle. I wish. And this is me. Yes, Nick. This is Jared live. Lethal performance on a beautiful Friday morning here in sunny South Florida. It's warming up. Yes, it is. Yep. Awesome piece of machinery. Got one of the seats uncovered. Take a look at this thing. Got carbon fiber in the seat. I mean, this thing is unreal. Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome. All right, guys. Welcome. Here we go. He's here. Yes. Okay, he's Woo! here. So, uh, congratulations, Billy. You got you got yourself a beautiful '66 Heritage Edition. Uh, <laughs> Vin '66. We've been waiting for this one for a long time. Um, Vin 66 in this spec is, is pretty special. So, so just to give you a quick, uh, just a quick rundown, um, heritage package, harking back to the 66 car that won Le Mans 66. Um, we wanted to go back and win 50 years later, right? So, how do we do that? Well, we wanted to go back and win it in the GT class with the Ford GT. And the, and the, and the, and the engineers started by knowing some figures, right? They knew how many pit stops they needed to actually win the race, which meant that they knew how much fuel they're going to use, which meant they knew the horsepower number. So when they put all these equations into a, into the computer, they came up with a shape. It was never designed to look like a old GT. It just happened to look like that because that's how they drew it out. So every time they started to make something else on the drawing board, it starts to change like the frontal area figure and the and the downforce and the efficiency. So we try to try to make it as efficient as efficiency as possible, and this is the shape they've kind of come up with. So it's a very very low roof line, 
super tight greenhouse uh, and with these uh, unique flying buttresses on each side to try and keep the main bodywork of the car hugged around the cockpit and the engine. Um, obviously on the side pods we've got the intercoolers on each side uh, for our uh, twin turbo eco boost. Three and a half meter. But uh, it's a pretty special car. Even something as simple as there's no real door handles on this car. Like you look at all the other vehicles around, there's something you can actually get hold of and pull to actually open up the doors. On this one, you don't. You just hit it with the back of the hand, flick with the fingers, and the door will start to come open. It's literally just as quick and as easy as that, and the whole thing pops up and open. Once the doors open, open, you can kind of see how tightly compact the uh, the the driver's compartment is, the greenhouse. Okay, the thickness of the door. Okay, you got to you got to kind of take the whole width of the car minus this. That gives you how much space you've actually got inside. It's it's cozy, okay. I won't, I won't call it tight. It's cozy, it's cozy. okay. So I'll so, say, and you will be good friends with your passenger real real quick inside here, okay. Um, how small is it in there? It, once you get in, it's comfortable. Um, I'm six two, and my hair doesn't touch the roof. Uh, the pedals are not at full stretch. Um, I put people who are six seven in this car, and um, they fit just fine. There you go. It, uh, yeah, so so big people you can fit in. Also, like, you know, likewise, short people can also fit in here too. The the, hook, the seat base doesn't move, but the pedals and the whole steering wheel will actually move out towards you. Um, it is. This is. Everybody talks about a race car for the road. This is a race car for the road. It's basically there's no carpet in here. Um, there's no sound deadening. It is. It's a carbon tub. It's a carbon tub race car. Uh, this car. This chassis. This tub could have been born a race car. Um, up until about station four in the carbon room. Uh, this vehicle has a roll bar built into the substructure. Um, that is where the road car and the race cars kind of separate on the production line. The race cars get all the extra door bars and all the extra cross braces in that you need for the racing. This car doesn't get that because we need to be able to still get in and out of it comfortably. Okay. Uh, the car itself is 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 uh, sits right about thirty two hundred pounds right now. Okay. Uh, 32, 33. Um, it, it's not super light, but then again, it's not super heavy either. You know, all modern supercars are not as, not quite as light as what they were 25 years ago because now we need airbags, cruise control, air conditioning, all this extra stuff that makes cars usable. And uh, all that is inside here. The supercar with two cup holders, a 12 volt, 12 volt power outlet. Uh, what else have we got inside here? Beautiful leather seats cruise control <laughs> radio the system that works is it runs a Ford sync 3 uh, infotainment system so all of you Ford fans you're gonna be able to work the dashboard on this dead easy because it is a Ford you jump in and it, it acts just like a normal Ford Raptor Ford Mustang Ford anything it's very very simple the uh, the engine in this thing uh, 647 horsepower 550 foot-pound of torque uh, out of the three and a half liter uh, V6 EcoBoost. It's pretty special. Okay, a supercar, a modern supercar with a V6 twin turbo. Yeah, it's here. It's in the flesh and it works. Okay, V6 kind of beats the V8 in something like this because of the size and the packaging. You know, it's a little shorter, uh, which means that we can pull pull everything a little bit closer together. We can kind of pull the gearbox forward. It's nice and tight. It's not a big wide open V. So it's, it's pretty tight, so we can kind of pull the bodywork in around it. And it's just more fuel efficient. Yeah. Uh, modern motorsport is all about efficiency. Anybody can make power. It's easy to make power like this. It, that's, that's, that's the easy part, it's trying to make it efficiently. You know? uh, F1 cars run V6s now, 1600 V6s, tiny, tiny little things. So power is easy to make, it's efficiency that we need. So as far as living with it every day, it is a supercar. So you're not going to be finding massive um, luggage space. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> that, that is your luggage space. It's big enough for a credit card and a toothbrush. <laughs> so uh, yeah, if, if you're going if you're going to go road tripping, you need to like FedEx your clothes. Okay. Just roof rack. Just roof rack it. Yeah. Um, in, in, inside here, this is a dry sump oil system. So. Um, that's what this tank is right here. It's real hot right now because that also helps some of the engine oil cooling as well uh, with it being an alloy tank. Um, but that is that is a functional dry sump, dry sump tank. Uh, behind it, we've got a small tool kit, um, small uh, lithium ion battery tender, battery charger. 
and then of course we're all the way back to the rear wing. Uh, this wing right now is stowed in the down position. When this wing is in the down position, it's all about efficiency. Okay, we don't want to be creating a lot of downforce right now. It's more just to keep the vehicle stable. When you get up to, in not, let's say normal mode, you get up to 90 miles an hour, the whole wing will, will jump up. It will get a slightly greater angle of attack too. Okay? Uh, but the biggest thing it does is that the panels on each side of this rear wing actually move. So when the wing comes up, the wing comes up, greater angle of attack, and also this flap underneath will actually move up right about six millimeters. That gives us a small gurney on the top, so when the airflow bounces off the top, it kind of causes a little bit of turbulence, okay, which helps the diffuser side of things. But the, the, the wing's got to help create downforce from the underside of the wing, because it's going to change the profile to a, to a slightly greater um, wing angle profile, which is going to help suck the car down. Downforce is created on the rear wing by being pulled down from underneath rather than pushed down on the top. There's nothing on this car that is fake. <laughs> every, every piece of this vehicle is used for something. Uh, so much so that the small area between the back wheel and the tail lights in, in both sides, that's where the coolers are kept. So on that side of the car, we've got the engine oil cooler. On this side, we've got the clutch and the transmission cooler sitting right here. The air will actually escape the coolers through the center of the light. It, it kind of looks cool, uh, but again, it was all function first, design second. Okay, we had to have an exhaust for the coolers. We also had to have lights. Okay, well, you kind of put them both together right there. It seemed to work out pretty good. That is cool. This car runs the Acroprovic uh, titanium exhaust. Um, these we went to Acroprovic because anybody that's a sport bike person mm -hmm. knows Acroprovic, they make the best tie exhaust in the world. Um, just the craftsmanship in these tie exhaust alone is beautiful. Uh, tie is very brittle, it's very hard, it's difficult to kind of work with and to be able to shape it in that roundness with no tooling marks, it's amazing. I, I, I love seeing craftsmanship like that. Just, and that's just the exhaust, never mind the rest of the million things in the car. It is a beautiful car. So we always get the question, why the silver, why the silver wires on the back? It's a simple thing, oh, it's, that's where the license plate is going to go. But also we have to get power to the reversing lights. So uh, before we put the tape on, because the exhaust is literally four inches behind these wires, it would melt the wires. So tape them up. You, know. you ever seen a race car? It's got this tape everywhere <laughs> on it. It's covered in everything. And then, and then uh, you've got diffuser, diffuser strikes and then a, an active diffuser as well, a working diffuser. It is a flat floor car, so uh, s as soon as the air hits the front at the splitter, um, it either goes over the top through the radiator or underneath the car and then gets exhausted out the diffuser at the back. The, uh, the, the side of the car is pretty efficient too. Um, you can kind of see on both sides how sculpted the bottom of the door area is. Um, this is the first car that has got um, a couple of different things. It's the first road car that runs two different spring rates for two in parallel to each other. So you've got a torsion, so you've got a coil spring and then a torsion bat. Okay. It's the first car, it's the first supercar that actually runs um, the spool valve dampers as well. Okay. It's the first spool valve damper car. Um, it's the first keel car. So the front arms on this vehicle are literally almost two foot long because this car is a tub with like a keel sticking right out the front of it which is real real narrow about six inches wide that is where the uh, front lower arms actually bolt to to give us long front arms why is all that stuff important to try and give us extra space between the wheels um, which is where the tunnel is the front tunnels just like the rear tunnels on the old race cars we've got a front tunnel on this to help create some downforce and then send all the air underneath um, back out and like actually down the side of the car, hence the shape of the doors. Lots of cool stuff everybody, Wow. lots of cool stuff. I mean that was just a quick five minute run around the car of what it is. Um, you can spend hours talking about every last little piece on the car. It runs Gorilla Glass windshield and in here as well, engine cover. Okay, We saved about, uh, I want to say 15% uh, weight saving. 
So the glass is, uh, the Gorilla Glass is a triple uh, laminate as opposed to just a normal double last laminate. Um, it also runs a little bit thinner too. If a front windshield is usually like eight mil thick, this will be six. So it's, that's how much we're saving. But just, just in the two windows alone. Um, the whole car is carbon fiber. Nothing on it. There's very, very few pieces of aluminium on the whole car. There's the rear subframe that starts like right here coming off. We have to have steel coming off the tub down beside the engine just because the turbos are right here. We can't have alloy pieces right next to the hot turbo. So it's steel coming off the tub and then you've got the rear alloy subframe at the back. You've got the front uh, subframe legs that come out of the tub at the front. That's also some alloy pieces. And then the final piece of alloy is uh, there's actually going to be the wing on top of the dash. Because it's a carbon car, trying to get radio signals in and out of the car is difficult. You can't really send carbon uh, radio signals through carbon. So we had to put a big ground plane of a big alloy panel on top of the dashboard so the radio actually works. So <laughs> We, you know, we, 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 we try and cater to comfort because everybody listens to the radio when they drive, even in a supercar. <laughs> so, uh, but that's really the only piece of alloy. The door hinges, the front and the rear subframes, the, uh, and the um, wing on top of the dash. That's basically it. The rest of the car is a carbon car. And to fit and finish on a carbon car is usually a little, usually a little iffy because it's, it's carbon, it's composite. The fit and finish on this is actually really nice. The doors close, the doors work, everything, which is, I know it sounds stupid to sound, say, but everything works. It's a supercar that the doors close nicely. You don't have to slam it, you just close the door. Everything fits. Um, that's the best part of my job. I enjoy it when I don't have to fix the car when it arrives. <laughs> it, it's ready to go. It's a beautiful car. So, uh, anybody got any questions? What else do you want to know? I got one about the suspension. I saw when it came off the truck, yep. um, and you guys backed it up. It was like higher, and then uh, you did something, and the car just completely like lower down and stuff. What is that? Uh... So basically, uh, when I was backing it off the truck originally, um, I had the front up in front lift mode. So because it's a supercar, it's fairly low normal ride height like this. This is normal ride height. Anytime you're going to be loading it on trailers or going over speed bumps, even just get it in people's driveways. You hit the button inside the car the front end will lift up two will actually lift up two more inches you hit the button again it's going to drop um so uh, back to the normal ride height if you want to uh, go 216 miles an hour which is the top speed or you want to be going on track for, for some track mode use uh, you can you can also hit the the track mode use button um, it will lower the car two inches and that's what we had when we were parked out here we actually had it in v-max <coughs> Okay. The car was low with the wings down because to do 216 miles an hour, you need the car on the floor with no wings, you need the efficiency. Okay, uh, if, if you're going to be going on a road course, if you're going to be going to Sebring, you want the car low, but you need the wings for the downforce. So, uh, yeah, it's it's the only car that runs, said we said it runs two different spring rates um, in parallel to each other, so literally it does. Um, it runs through a bunch of different rockers and uh, you've basically got a, a, a coil spring buried in the floor of the tub actuated by uh, the torsion bar so every time you go over a bump the torsion bar will twist and work the, work the actual coil spring okay so wh when we go into low low ride height we can compress the coil spring which coil binds it and now we're just riding on the torsion bar okay so for normal ride height boing we're running uh, torsion bar into the softer coil spring. Sweet. It's the only car like that right now. And it's all done by switch or like a computer on the... the yeah, yeah, yeah. So like there's... Um, on, on the actual steering wheel itself, we can toggle between the different drive modes. Okay. Um, between sport, normal, and wet, which is normal ride height, uh, we can toggle that on the fly. Um, if you want to lower the vehicle to VMAX or track, we have to be stationary in park for okay. obvious reasons. We're making a big, big change. Yeah. So we want to be stopped, stopped for doing that. Sweet. Um, the, uh, the lower ride height is track use only. You do not want to be driving track use on a uh, track ride height on the road. It's way, way too low. But put it this way, the, the, um, in lower ride height, the car, the car's ride height is 70 millimeters. 
It's crazy. Which is super, super low. You know, the race car probably runs 65 to 70 ish. So cool. If it's just going to be tech, she's going to depend upon the track. So we're five mil higher than a race car. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to be doing that on the road. Not on the streets. No. No. Okay. So, Thank you. Yeah, no worries. What's under the hood or the bonnet? Uh, not a lot. Do you want to take a look? Sure. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I told you. Well, you. There is a lot. It's a very small space. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. This is not a this is not a space to be able to carry something because it's a keel car. There's no space. Yeah, yeah. Literally, wash, washer fluid, hydraulic fluid. That's it. Valve block. This valve block runs the whole suspension. Steering rack, front engine roll bar, brake fluid, and power distribution. You can actually see the suspension. Size of the fans in there. Yeah. Wow. It's a race car. It's going to get hot. And he, he, we just need the fans. Very cool. Anyone here ever driven one of these on a track before? <laughs> <laughs> well, since nobody's got any capabilities here, I'll volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is beautiful. Yeah. yeah, these vents right here were actually not in the first original design. Um, I don't know if you were you were testing it back then, Billy, but uh, when the first cars didn't have these these slots in right here, so um, it was super super tail happy because to, with with these vents not here, the front is pinned. When the when the rear wing is down, we've got like an aero imbalance because the front is so efficient, it's pinning the nose and the tail super happy. So we had to add these vents. So when the wing is down like it is now, these vents are actually open to allow there's some extra air in here and it will actually stall the underwing actually stalls like the front tunnels when the wing goes up these will close to give it aero balance across the whole car technology there. Yes. Yeah. yeah yeah awesome yeah yeah when did they add that recently uh before the first cars got shipped to, to customers so uh probably probably like a year ago that's you right there Probably. Yeah. They, um, Funny. Some of these guys commenting on here still think it's a, a V8, not realizing <laughs> that no. the technology has changed quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, transmission. Yeah. Uh, what? Uh, I'm not familiar with the transmission it's in the car. It's a seven-speed uh, dual-clutch Getrag. Um, works really, really nice actually. Uh, a lot of the dual clutches are kind of jerky at, at slow speed, but even getting it off the truck, it's pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually pretty smooth to drive even at super slow speeds. A lot of the old dual clutches are very jerky and stop starty. This, you can drive this around town, it's just fine. It works actually pretty nice. Uh, and then once you actually get out there, it can be in drive and it acts like an automatic. Leave it in drive. If you want to play the paddles, you can. If you just let go of the paddles, it's back to automatic. Hmm. If you hit the manual mode, yeah, then it is manual. I mean, literally, if you leave here, you'll go all the way to Orlando in first gear on the rev limiter. It, it will not <laughs> change up. It, um, it's a pretty special gearbox, and it works well. That's crazy. Yeah. What is the red line on this car? Uh, uh, the rev limiter comes in at 7,000. Um, it's a turbo car, so... It's negotiable. Yeah. You know, you get to... Well, you know, if you get to six and a half, six and three quarters it's it's it doesn't die on its face but it's going to be getting out of breath so just change gear mm -hmm. you know it, it doesn't because it's a turbo you don't need to be running 10 grand all the time now is this the transmission uh gm and ford worked on together uh i've got no idea i okay. think no, it just, that's the 10 speed that's yeah, the 10 yeah. Speed. yeah yeah you just i think it, it, who, whoever's building a supercar just basically call get drag and go hey guys can you send me a, can you send me a gearbox because it's in a lot of different stuff Gotcha. Uh, it's a great box. I mean, why try and like reinvent the wheel mm -hmm. when something's on the shelf? Absolutely. And it's great. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Pretty neat yeah. for a Friday, huh? Yeah. Pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Now, what are those lenses on the headlights made out of? Yeah. Are they glass? Uh, this? No, no. This this is just a plastic cover. Now, in the lens in the product, so plastic, cool. there's a kind of plastic no resin yeah. or something. I mean, they look Someone just asked the uh, yeah. 
why the uh, the V6 and not the V8 twin turbo. And if you missed earlier, we're talking about efficiency and uh, weight and space. And this EcoBoost makes great power for being a V6 twin turbo and is smaller. It gave them more room to fit gearbox and design the car to be efficient the way they wanted it to. So that's why they did not go with the, uh, the V8 and chose the EcoBoost. <laughs> carbon fiber everywhere on this thing. I mean, this, this car is carbon fiber. You wouldn't even think that the body is carbon fiber, but just looking at it, I mean, it's pretty incredible. Let's take a look inside here again. Crazy. Here are the keys. Take a look on the driver's side. Horsepower rating, what is it, like 650 again? What was the horsepower rating again on it? Well, six, six, six forty-seven. Six forty-seven. It's still covered in all the stuff from the factory. The dash is covered as well. Here's your paddle shifters. It's unbelievable. Again, all ca carbon fiber in here. Value. These things aren't cheap, there, Brian. A lot of bitcoins involved in this one. <laughs> well, not too many nowadays. Yeah, I guess you'd have to divide, <laughs> what, 500-something thousand dollars by... It was like 16. 16. Okay, so if you divide, you know, 500,000 dollars or so by uh, 16,000 dollars, you got how many Bitcoins? <laughs> and there you have it. Enrique, we had the car running earlier when we pulled it off the truck. I'm not sure uh, if anyone's going to be beating on this thing right now, but... It sounds great. Pretty cool. Hey, any other questions uh, out here from the guys uh, watching that uh, that they like to know about the technology of the vehicle or anything that we missed? I mean, there is a lot of stuff on here. Yeah, there's that Akropovic titanium exhaust. Excellent, Logan. Thanks, buddy. 28.5 bitcoins, by the way. I just Googled it. Yes, 28.5. There you have it. Good job. It's something that doesn't exist, yeah, and you could buy something like this computer. with it. Amazing. That's not too bad, then. 29 of them? Yeah, yeah I know, right? Yeah, that sounds cheap. <laughs> Just 29. How much horsepower does it really make? Well, it's rated at 647. I'm not sure what it puts down at the wheels, but... So cool. Uh oh, 3,200 pounds. This this official. Thank you for your service. Here you go. This goes back in the truck tonight. So I'm blur them out. Yeah, we're good, guys. Everyone, uh, again, thanks for watching. Glad to have you here with us. Got a great, great crew out here, a uh, beautiful car, and uh, thanks for watching. We will hopefully bring uh, more of this to you guys uh, here soon. All right? Everyone enjoy the weekend, and uh, make sure to mine some more Bitcoins.